Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Had a little bit of a quandary for October. I actually didn't have any Halloween books as a kid. I do technically own some children's Halloween stories now, but only two of them are in really a children's book format. The other ones from the same series and same author are more comic book style. So like, hmm, what else could we do for October? What's a common thing people dress up as in October? Superheroes! Especially from the 80s. So we are looking at the Princess of Power, the one and only She-Ra. The Princess of Power! Sorry, I had to do my announcer's voice. <laughs> it's alright. So this is actually a golden super adventure book. So I think it's technically a golden book, but it is not a little golden book. This is a paperback, not a hardcover. And as you can see from the image, my goodness, what a cover. Yep, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to crop that. Though it looks like it would be actually pretty easy to edit out some parts so I can put the text in the right place. <laughs> All right, so this is Princess of Power, The Sword of She-Ra, written by Roger McKenzie, Illustrated by Fred Fredericks. Hmm. That picture and that, those don't look like they were done by the same artist. Checking the back. Cover art is by a different artist. The cover art is by Earl Norham. Hmm. I am going to have to add another line to the credits on the video. Oh, look, Cringer. Mm-hmm. I think we're on the wrong planet. On Eternia, hidden by the evergreen forest, lay Castle Greyskull. Forever guarded by a wise and beautiful sorceress, many ancient secrets were locked behind its cold stone walls. But none were more amazing than the one she now revealed to Prince Adam and Cringer. This is the Sword of Protection, she said. It looks like the power sword you gave me, Adam marveled. The one that changes me to He-Man. And gets us into trouble! Stammered Cringer. Uh, and, and gets us into trouble. Huh. The illustrations look a lot like the show, and it's more of a comic book style than the show, though the show was pretty simplistic on its own because animation budgets. Mm hmm. Especially in the 80s. Mm hmm. And of course, Cringer's hiding underneath the dining room table. I wasn't aware that Castle Grayskull had a dining room table, but that looks like a bowl with a couple of eggs in it and a pitcher of some sort. Though the posing seems kind of awkward for He-Man. I should say Adam. Yeah, it looks like he's kind of reaching across towards something, but there's nothing where his arm's going. The sorceress pointed to a magical-looking door. She said, This portal will carry you to a planet called Etheria. There you must find the sword's true owner. Let the sword guide you. You will know when you have found her. And hurry! Both Etheria and Eternia are in danger. Prince Adam and Cringer arrived on Etheria in a burst of magic. They found themselves in a clearing where a young man was battling several warriors. Before she moves on to the next page, I'm going to comment on the fact that, yeah, any door that looks like that is definitely magical. Though, though it also looks like it could fry you. So, yeah, kind of like red versus blue, like, I'm not going through that teleporter. You saw what happened to the rock when we tossed it through. And boom, green glow. There's Cringer and Prince Adam. And I instantly recognize the guy in the background. Don't know his name, can't remember it. Bo and Cowl, though Cowl's color scheme is done incorrectly. Ah, uh, well, maybe the only colors they were allowed to print. Friend, my name's Adam. Need some help? I'm called Bo, and against the evil horde, I can use all the help I can get. New here? Cowl asked Cringer. Never fear. Can't help it, Cringer stammered. I hate trouble. Cowl ruffled his feathers. I know what you mean, but you'll hate the evil horde more. It was a cold, bitter day when they touched Etheria's shore. And Prince Adam being un-Prince Adam-like, though he's on a different planet, so he can be. Yes. Interesting, though, because that now looks more like the Sword of Power rather than the Sword of Protection, because it's more silver. Though, I once again, I think that's because of printing limitations, because they wanted the swoosh representing the motion of the sword to be in yellow. 
and if they put it in yellow as well, it wouldn't stand out as well. At least that's what I'm guessing. Because it's like a small color palette. The posing's better in that shot, though. For Prince Adam and Bo? Yes. Is his name that literal? Yes. He, he shoots a bow. At least it's not as bad as Jane and the Dragon, where the fool is called Jester, the cook is called Pepper, and the gardener is called Rake. Ah. And no, we're not doing Jane and the Dragon. Ever. <laughs> well done, friend Adam, Bo exclaimed as the evil horde warriors fled. They won't bother us again for a while. Who are they? asked Prince Adam. Why did they want to hurt you? Better come with me, Bo said. There is much for you to learn. Also, how do you know Bo was in the right? Just because he was outnumbered doesn't mean he was the good guy. Eh, but that's how these things work. So you I didn't realize you finished that. <laughs> it's just one text box. Also, it may have actually been his sword. Because they show Prince Adam holding both swords in this shot. Yes, and the Sword of Protection is in his left hand, so it was the Sword of Power on the other page. Though they still look like they are limited to a certain number of colors per page. Yeah. Are you going to tell me Bo's left-handed? That or he switched it to his left... No, wait. He's using his left hand to pat Adam on the back, so he may be left-handed. Yeah, because your bow goes in your non-dominant hand. No, but he's drawing back like a right-handed archer on the previous page. So maybe he just switched hands mm. now that he's no longer having to shoot. All right. That or the reference image they had was a left-handed person, and the other reference image they had was a right-handed person. Or they didn't think about it, and they just decided this is how we want the shot framed. Mm -hmm. Others on Ethereal were also seeking knowledge, in the dark and forbidding land known as the Fright Zone. <coughs> Sorry, Fright Zone, Fright Side. The book I am reading versus the books I'm not reading. Mm -hmm. Home of the Evil Horde. The cards warn of a stranger, Lord Hordak, hissed the witch called Shadow Weaver. He brings great trouble. He will be dealt with, said the Evil Hordak. Adora, you know what to do. Kind of interesting framing here because I think they picked the end of the conversation for the framing because he's clearly indicating towards Adora. I forgot how the names can be in He-Man and She-Ra. Yeah, She-Ra is basically He-Man for girls except Adora doesn't have to act stupid and apparently Prince Adam does. And the framing's nice, the uh, shadow weaver is in the background, very simplistic background, giving focus to the two characters in front. And of course, female heroes always have to not wear pants. Really? Those are leggings. <laughs> if there were pants, they wouldn't have these separate parts that obviously, obviously emphasize certain parts of their body. Meanwhile, Bo took Prince Adam through the Whispering Woods to meet Princess Glimmer, daughter of Queen Angela. Bo told Glimmer about Adam's heroism. Once Etheria was a quiet, peaceful world, until the arrival of the evil horde, Glimmer explained. Now we must fight for our freedom, and the freedom of my mother, Queen Angela. She has been captured by the evil horde, but we don't know where she has been taken. That's kind of hard, because I want to say it is Angela, but I could sworn in the series it's Queen Angela. Because they want to make it sound more angel-like. Because, hello, check the wings. Some nice posing in this. And indication. And as I commented before on the outfits. It's leggings with like a swimsuit bottom on top of it. To emphasize the lower half. And skin fitting top parts. They always like doing that in like this time period. To emphasize kind of a future like thing. Like they thought women's clothing would be like this in the future. It's very nicely posed. It's got an illustration in the background indicating what Princess Glimmer is talking about and what happened in the background. So I'm guessing, is that her father or just a random villager? Random villager. Princesses don't have fathers in the 80s. <laughs> what are you talking about? Except Princess Zelda in the Legend of Zelda that was part of the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. Mm. Or the second game, 
Princess Zelda had a father in that. I'm specifically talking more television. Ah. That green glow looks familiar. Oh, I see what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. She's this world's equivalent of... Orko. Oh, yeah. Yep, I can see that now. It's been a while. Suddenly, a rumpled little woman appeared in a crackle of magic. We do now, said Madame Raz. Or at least I do. She has been taken to Beast Island. Glimmer turned away sadly. Then it is worse than I thought. No one has ever escaped that dreadful place. Maybe not, said Prince Adam. But there's always a first time for everything. Hmm. How about a first time for Cringer not running? Well, yeah. It's only when he's not Cringer. Yeah. She ever got the better end of the deal all the way around. Uh, also flying... I'll mention that after you read the next page. <laughs> Madame Raz set to work conjuring up a spell. And soon Prince Adam, Cringer, really, and the rebel band were all astride flying goats racing towards Beast Island. Goats? moaned Cringer. Didn't Madame Raz mean to conjure up boats? Shh, you'll hurt her feelings, Cringer, said Prince Adam. She means well. She just has trouble remembering the right spells. Besides, there's Beast Island now. Flying goats. So she meant flying boats? Mm-hmm. Okay. I've forgotten more about this series than I thought. Well, take what you remember from He-Man and then apply it to the equivocal characters. So this is the helpful but ditzy character who knows the hero's secret. Mm. Oh, yes. I should comment on the flying goats other than their flying goats. And do they have like a... Oh, wait, no, that's the sword. Yes, that's the sort of protection. They put it in an awkward spot, so all you see is the tip of it coming from out behind the goat's head, so it looks like a third horn that's coming forward like a unicorn. Yes. <laughs> As opposed to that are curving backwards like normal goat horns. Mm -hmm. And of course, it looks like Cringer is just barely hanging off the back of the poor goat. Or he's on his own goat in the background when he's just not drawing that one. Yeah, well, either way, the goat carrying him is probably upset because I bet he has his claws sunk in. Oh, yeah. Suddenly, an evil horde warship attacked the rebel band. In the confusion, Prince Adam and Cringer became separated from the others. Oh, look, plot convenience. And, yep. Zap! Suddenly we're separated. As you said, plot convenience. Reaching Beast Island, Prince Adam drew his hidden power sword. It wasn't very hidden earlier. That was a sort of protection, though you're right, he was using the sort of power when he was helping Bo. And seriously... In that outfit, where do you hide a spare sword? I know, right? By the power of Grayskull! I'm not yelling that loud. It's about time. Seriously, he's saying that while he's still Cringer, not Battle Cat. Mm-hmm. A burst of magic changed him into He-Man as Cringer became Battle Cat. But what about, I have the power? Well, if you look at the staples, we're halfway through the book. We don't have time. <laughs> Uh, I, I think Cringer at this point knows that he's going to feel better once he's battle cat. Also, armor! Yeah, armor. It's very important. Though apparently He-Man didn't get that lesson. Don't you know in the 80s, the same math that works for women in modern video games also works for men? The less clothing you're wearing, the higher your armor value is? I know. she is as modest by comparison. Mm-hmm. He-Man and Battle Cat headed toward the prison, where the rebel band was attacking the evil horde warriors. You didn't want to wait for Adam to catch up? You weren't worried about what happened to him? No the, one the, ever the, worries about Adam. <laughs> except Tila. The band was more than equal to the prison guards, and they soon gained the upper hand. There were two of them. Three if you count Madame Raz, who isn't even in this shot. Yeah. If it's that easy, why is this beast island so impossible to rescue anyone from? Yeah, we'll find out. We must find Queen Angela, Bo shouted. And I have another to find, thought He-Man, the true owner of the Sword of Protection. You're getting kind of late to that. Why weren't you thinking about that sooner? Eh, the posing's a little awkward for He-Man, but it's actually not too bad. It's just the way he's stepping and hunching. 
I get they're trying to indicate motion, that he's running towards the situation, but it seems a bit off. Also, Cringer's transformed. Why not just ride? Yeah. Though maybe he wanted Cringer to be, or Battle Cat to be free to jump on the bad guys and go num num. Yeah. Yeah, they, they do have potential both as working separately and teaming up. The Sword of Protection began to glow with magic, pointing at Adora, who was leading the prison guards. You, you're the one? he man exclaimed, stepping forward. But how can that be? Caught off guard, he man and the others were stunned into unconsciousness by Adora. Whoops. And this is a two panel shot. There's been a couple of multi panel shots in this. I just didn't bother to describe that particular part. But in this part, we have the top where He Man's pointing the sword of protection at Adora and looking all shocked. And then we have the next shot where we have strange lightning lines coming out to indicate being stunned in the classic kind of yellow pops to indicate the flashing before your eyes. And everyone's dropping their weapons and fainting and... Glimmer? Is that her name? Yes. Glimmer is doing the classic, oh, I'm a woman, fainting. Yes. Bo looks somewhere in between like he's trying to catch her and like he's going to fall on top of her. That or he's doing a dance move. Because he's like, oh. <laughs> All right. Hordak will be pleased, Adora thought as she picked up the sword of protection. Magic flashed suddenly and she found herself face to face with the sorceress of Castle Greyskull. Anyone who watched Here in the 80s saw this coming. Look, said the sorceress, all these years Hordak has tricked you. He is evil, and his evil is spreading across Etheria. You must stop him, Adora. He raised me, Adora said. I serve him gladly. Hmm. A semi-two-panel shot. We have a small panel off to the left with Adora going, uh, what now? And then her looking at, in the second panel, which is her looking at the sorceress. And the sorceress is like, here's what's going on. <laughs> With a nice kind of bubbly framed images of what's actually happening in the kingdom. All nicely illustrated. Yeah. Like Adora isn't aware of this. She's an elite guard. She's aware of this. And introducing retcon. <laughs> Hordak kidnapped you from the palace of Eternia when you were an infant, the sorceress explained. He raised you. But you don't belong with him. You have a twin brother, Prince Adam, who has come to Etheria to find you. And now he lies, stunned by your gun blast and his other identity. He-Man, protector of Eternia. How does the sorceress know that Adora shot him? <laughs> She's a sorceress. She knows everything. And there's a nice shot of Hordak. <sighs> Names. Carrying the young... I'm guessing Adora running off. Well, it's a pink blanket, so yes. But we never really explained what was the purpose of kidnapping one of the royal twins. Yeah, and retcon twins. Yes. Because we've never heard in He-Man that, Oh, that daughter I could have had, and this stupid son! We only ever heard the second part. <laughs> yep. Now I have found you at last, thanks to He-Man. And your true destiny awaits, proclaimed the sorceress. Okay, when did she get the words? For the honor of Greyskull, I am She-Ra. And now she has the power. You are She-Ra, princess of power. Use that power wisely for the cause of good. And we're going with the short skirt in the design. I wonder how you would redesign that part of her outfit. Give her pants nowadays or... Give her one of those, um, squirts? Um, possibly a split riding skirt. Mm. Because she has an epic flying mount. Mm. But, you know, it's supposed to be very Valkyrie. Mm. I always thought it was very Valkyrie. It is very Valkyrie. I don't know if they were going for that, but it definitely is. Hey, that would be an inspiration for a modern version of her. Mm -hmm. Because Valkyries were freaking awesome. That works. With a newfound sense of goodness... <coughs> Sorry. She-Ra used her healing powers to awaken He-Man. <laughs> of course. 
I'm sorry for the evil I have caused, she said, but I'm going to make it up to you, and to all Etheria. He-man, said the sorcerers. Meet your sister, Shira, princess of power. But, but, <laughs> stammered He-man at a loss for words. Then the sorceress and Shira explained everything to him. Of course. Yeah, and there's poor He-man going, hey? Just has this, it's kind of a, the best way to describe it is a stunned look. Like, I'm high on something and I just saw pink elephants fly across the sky. But then right after that, I saw a dragon with no wings going, hey! And what's really interesting about this shot is how they drew the sorceress. Like, they didn't draw her eyes. And they did the classic shadow thing, like, I'm in deep thought. Yes. Because we really want the focus to be on she and He-Man. Because those were the money makers. Mm -hmm. And those are some nice money makers. <sighs> yeah, I kind of set myself up for that one. Oh, yeah. she awakened the members of the rebel band. As they struggled to their feet, they were confused and surprised to see she and He-Man. Yes, two warriors that you've never seen before are helping you. Eh. In enemy territory. It's a plus. Shira said, I am Shira. I come from a place far away, as does He Man, who stands by my side. We are here to help you. Bo said, What happened to Prince Adam? Finally? <laughs> and why would these two know? Well, it doesn't hurt to ask it out loud, because the universe, you know, get yeah. answers. He is safe, said He Man, and I have taken his place here. It's, it's quite literal. It's a good way to tell the truth without, without telling the truth. Mm -hmm. He is safe because he's now He-Man. And you've taken his place because you're now He-Man. Mm -hmm. With She-Ra and He-Man at their side, the rebels quickly routed the evil horde warriors and freed Queen Angela. You fight well, said He-Man to She-Ra. I'd better, She-Ra answered. After all, I'm your sister. <laughs> uh, sis family banter even though they're not quite family. Genetically related, yes, but they haven't been living with each other. They haven't really had time to really family bond. So yeah, right now it's just friendly banter. Mm -hmm. But of course they mean it in the sisterly brotherly banter at this point because, hey, they're instantly that way. Yes, because, hey, we have so much to bond over because we both now have these secret identities. I mean, you can both kick tail. Mm -hmm. Not that she wasn't good already. Yeah, that, that pretty much has to be my favorite scene out of the whole book. You mean that guard over there running away from Cringer and... Battle Cat and Madame Raz? Battle yes. Cat and Madame Raz, yeah. Yeah, and Madame Raz on foot. Uh, we didn't bother to put Broom in this book. Hmm. Would have been an extra character to draw. Oh, very nice posing. And we have Bow in front shooting a bow. Mm-hmm. And over on the previous page, we have He-Man and she fighting off some... Awesome people. Pretty nice posing. We have she mostly focused on the battle and He-Man looking over at his sister, probably saying that comment back. Mm -hmm. And Glimmer in the background, freeing her mother. Yes. I must return to Eternia now, He-Man said. Will you join me? I'm needed here, she said. But one day, when Etheria is free once more. For Etheria, then, exclaimed He-Man as he and Battle Cat faded from sight. And for my sister, she Princess of Power. Okay, I only have one question. Is this like the first two episodes of the series in a book? Or first episode, I can't remember the... Yeah, this is basically the pilot condensed down into a book. Hmm. Heavily shortcutted. But that's how I knew I needed to grab this one first because it said the Sword of She-Ra. And I'm like, okay, I know I, just based on the title, I have to read this one first. Because I actually remember the other three better. Probably because this one was just a rehash. Mm. So, what are your thoughts overall on it? So much nostalgia, but at the same time painful. And I miss She-Ra. She was wonderfully overpowered. And so superior in so many ways to He-Man. This book was so cringer. Of course I have to use puns at this point. <sighs> but, yeah, she can be a little bit 
overpowered from what I can remember. Also, they showed her horse on the cover, but the horse was never introduced in this book. Was the horse introduced in the episodes? Yes, because Spirit was her horse while she still worked for the evil horde. Hmm. And when she jumped on his back as She-Ra, he transformed into Swiftwind. Hmm. Could they both fly? Or just Swiftwind? Just Swiftwind. Spirit was just a pink horse. Okay, that's a good change. Because then it goes from a horse that can't fly to a horse that can fly. It's better than, I have glasses. Now I don't. Yes, I do. Now I don't. You don't know who I am. I'm Superman. I'm not. <laughs> You're forgetting that Swiftwind is a winged unicorn. He goes from being an earth pony to being an alicorn. <laughs> so he's Big Mac. Pretty much. Except that this makes absolutely no sense canonically because Swiftwind is actually familiar with the island of the winged unicorns, which he shouldn't be as having been spirit as his default for as long as he was Adora's mount in the evil horde. Hmm. But yeah, a total ripoff that we don't get that. But like I said, this is a very shortcut version of the pilot. So we didn't have time for Swiftwind. We didn't have time for all the characters. Everything that happens, we even get shortcut explanations of what was going on in the backstory and all that. Mm hmm. But yep. come on, it's from the 80s. It was fun. Yep, and they even shortcutted the transformation sequences. The horror. Well, transformation sequences are to use up time. Books have a limited number of pages, especially with printing costs. Yes. So this has been Princess of Power, The Sword of She Ra, written by Roger McKenzie. Illustrated by Fred Fredericks. And cover art by Earl Norham. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this, please check out other episodes in Ember's Reading Room. Like, comment, subscribe. Feel like some more 80s nostalgia? If we can find this book for you, we'll put a link down there for it. Feel like going power shopping? Check out the Ebates link. Sign up and get cash back for buying things at stores you probably already shop at. Uh, for example, Target, Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot, you know, lots of places. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content on the Lux Analysis channel. Full disclosure, we do get some kickbacks if you make purchases through those links. Yay for ways to help support us without giving us money directly and you get to have stuff. That's cool, right?